Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord God for all that he does. Uh, I believe that uh, you can all hear me. And uh, I thank the Lord God for his goodness because of uh, the goodness of the Lord that we are able to join today and able to uh, participate in this time. Uh, I see beautiful faces. I see, I see great smiles. Hallelujah. And uh, I bless the name of the Lord God, of the Lord God, for allowing us to be here tonight. Something I want to share with you before we start is that there are times, quickly, there are times when the Lord is about to put his hand on you, but he wants you to be at the meeting. He wants you to be at the place. He wants you to be at the time where he has appointed you. Hallelujah. Ah, Father, thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord God. Sabre was ki fitera. Tere brondo bossi fronte ke pa he tere dando no sibi. This song is a French song that says, Il est assis sur son trône élevé. He is seated on his throne high and high. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Seigneur, nous te bénissons. Jésus, nous te glorifions, Père. Les bras s'offraient et les prêts de Les prêts de Le patere oskotororondo presidida. Éternel, Dieu tout puissant, Père éternel, nous te donnons toute la gloire pour ce soir. Nous te levons, Seigneur, pour ce soir. We lift up your holy name for tonight. We pray, Lord God, that you deposit in our hearts. We pray that you deposit in our minds the seed that will germinate, the seed that will germinate to create in us the fruit that you have appointed. We pray that tonight it be the shift that you have released from high that it be the shift that you have released from your throne upon each person individually. We thank you for the opportunity that you give unto us to sit at your feet. We thank you for the opportunity that you give unto us, Lord God, to sit before your throne. You are seated. High and high. I just want you to lift up your hands. Wherever you are, at, I want you to lift up your hands. Ask her to say you surrender unto the Lord. Ask you say that you surrender your heart. You surrender your minds. You surrender your soul. You surrender your family. You surrender your heart. You surrender your finances. You surrender everything that God is calling on to you. And as you have your hands lifted up, I pray that the reign of the Lord God penetrate in your life. I pray that the reigns of the Lord right now penetrate upon your life. I pray that the two of heaven comes down and touches you where you are right now. I pray that the Lord God Almighty deposit in you the seed to change your story. You were appointed and scheduled for your story.
story to change and that story must change that story shall change that story must change I pray that the divine favor of God cause you to be shifted that the Spirit of God cause you to be shifted I pray that the power of the Lord cause you to be shifted I pray that right now where you at the favor of the Almighty cause you to shift Et son son nom. Il est assis sur son trône élevé. Et tout mon être lui rend. Mighty, holy is his mighty name, Father of all light. I pray that your light shines in our minds right now. I pray that your light shines in our spirit right now. I pray that your light shines in our soul right now. That the power of God sees our heart. Transform our hearts, transform our mind, transform us from within. For the pearl that you have deposited in us, for the dream that you have deposited in your children, I pray that it becomes clearer. I pray that it becomes clearer. I pray that it becomes clearer in the name of Jesus Christ. Take over, take control. Seize this moment. Speak to thy people, even as you speak through us. I pray that your good will, your acceptable will, and your perfect will be established right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Just where you at, I want you, I want to hear you say, God of all things has provided me understanding to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Uh, people of God, you see, you cannot be fruitful if you don't understand what God is calling you unto. You cannot manifest the multiplication that God is asking of you if you don't understand, if you don't hear from him in order to do so. I want us to go in our topic for today. We're going to talk about business and the kingdom. Somebody say business and the kingdom. You see, the Lord Jesus says that I am about the business of my father. So you have business to do. The first business that you got to do is the business of the kingdom. You have to put in your mind the things of God that makes him please with you, please with your family, please with your life. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about business and the kingdom and the specific topic today is appointed to be wealth manufacturer. Hallelujah. Say to somebody, you are appointed to be wealth manufacturer. Ah, you, you got to believe it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are appointed to be wealth manufacturer. Hallelujah. Let's go in the book of Genesis. 
We're going to get our way through through Genesis chapter 1. And we're going to read from the first verse, sorry, from verse um, 20. And we're going to go down to 28. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 20. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 20. Mm -hmm. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Hallelujah. This word just penetrates my spirit. God says, let the water bring forth abundantly. Somebody say abundantly. God says, let the water bring forth abundantly. Let me tell you something. Human beings are also form of water. Hallelujah. There is water flowing inside your body. There is water flowing inside your veins, inside your entire being. So the command of God, he wants that out of you. Remember, the Bible says that who believe out of you will come what? Rivers of living waters. Hallelujah. You are connected to the waters of God. You are connected to the Ifrit rivers because God wants out of you comes out many things. When he talks about becoming a wealth manufacturer, he's not talking about amassing and then making money in order for yourself to be prideful or for yourself to keep it with you. No, God wants you and I to be able and capable to bring into his kingdom what he's needed in order to build the kingdom. Hallelujah. Somebody says, Lord, drop in my mind the idea that comes from the sound of your voice. Being wealth manufacturer has nothing to do with uh, being uh, uh, after money. No. Wealth manufacturer, it comes from God first. What is wealth? Wealth is first and foremost the fulfillment of the will of God that is perfect. Hallelujah. The first thing about wealth is the fulfillment of the will of God that is perfect. So when you understand that, you start positioning yourself to receive the order, to receive the command from God and be transformed from within. Let's go back to the word, please. And God said, mm -hmm. let the waters, verse 20. Verse 20, please. Mm -hmm. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. God wants you to bring forth something that has life. He does not want you to start something that will keep on dying. He does not want you to be always stuck. He wants something out of you that will bring life. Continue, please. Verse 21, and God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 22, and God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply, and feed the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. God is asking even in the things of this earth, hallelujah, to be multiplied. He's telling them to multiply. He's telling to the waters to multiply. He's telling to, this, uh, to, 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 to the earth to multiply. He's commanding the earth and the nature to multiply. Hallelujah. He is commanding the nature and the earth to multiply. And as he's commanding the earth and the nature to multiply, he's also commanding you to multiply. You cannot remain... Without multiplication. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Say, I cannot remain without multiplication. So the first thing, there are seven 
different mechanism just as yesterday that God utilized to cause you to become a wealth manufacturer. The first one comes from Genesis. It is a divine mandate that he puts in you to become wealth creator. Hallelujah. To become wealth creator. You may believe that you may not have something. That's what you believe. That's what your mind tells you. But that's not what God says. God is saying that he deposited in you, he deposited in your hands, he deposited in your life something to shift and to multiply. Let's go back to the word quickly, please. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the, even, and the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping things that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I, I, I want quickly to address this one so we continue. Yesterday, the Lord has spoken unto us that uh, our story was scheduled for change. Hallelujah. So today, you're entering that change. The Lord is saying and asking of you and I that for so long we have remained on the side of his will. The will of God from Genesis, it is a command for you to multiply and to multiply and to subdue. And this multiplication and dominion comes by the understanding of the word that God has spoken. So the first thing into moving into wealth manufacturing, meaning to fully and completely satisfy the pleasure of God and fulfill his perfect will, which includes your spiritual life, your financial life, your physical life, your ministry life, your work life, your business life, your children life, your household life, whatever that is life. For God already spoken by saying, let the water bring forth everything that has life. Hallelujah. So God is calling you to bring out of it things that has life. So first is a divine mandate. Tell to somebody, I am mandated by God to create wealth. Listen, when you need to give to the church, to pay for the light, to pay for the sound, to pay for, 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 give me for what? Uh, to, to pay for, for the bills or to pay for the evangelization, microphones. And then, and then, and then the pastor has to beg the church, please let us get the finances, money. And then he's begging. This is not the will of God. Because you are appointed to the kingdom of God. We say kingdom. In kingdom, you have rulers. Hallelujah. In kingdom, you have rulers. So God cannot appoint you being the church, being the body of Christ, and you are still behind. Somebody say, I refuse to, to be behind. 
Say, I refuse to stay behind. When, let, let, let me tell you something. When God asked to Moses, tell to my people, when they were coming out of Egypt, tell to my people, I want them to, to, to bring into what they have. Listen carefully. I, I want you to understand this one. When he asked Moses, let them bring what they have to build the Ark of the Covenant, Moses did not beg them. You know what I'm saying? Because they themselves have received from God. They were ready to receive. Even when the enemy has tried to destroy them, God calls the enemy to give to them. Are you following what I'm saying? When God has scheduled your life for a change, your story for a change, even your enemy will pay taxes for your feast. So he ought to schedule them in order to receive and go out. Why? To build something for God. So the day the Lord now has asked to Moses, tell them to bring in, there was no struggle. They brought with joy. The Bible says that they brought with joy. And the Lord has commanded, He says, let them know that anything they have to bring it out to be with joy. And they brought so much that Moses has to tell them, please stop bringing it. Are you following what I'm saying? But it is not normal that your man of God, that your apostle, your pastor is begging you. That's not normal. Because you are to become the wealth manufacturer that God has appointed you so that the kingdom of God continues. Understand that the kingdom of darkness is coming together to take over. We got to reverse this. Step to somebody. I am appointed to reverse the kingdom of darkness. So first principle, divine mandate. Second principle we're going to go through, the call to entrepreneur, to be entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, hallelujah. To have an entrepreneurial spirit, hallelujah. You cannot live only from paycheck. Tell to someone, you cannot live only from paycheck, hallelujah. God wants you to become productive because out of you, it ought to be an inheritance that you will leave to all your children, children. Are you following what I'm saying? So let's go in the word. In Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to read just a couple verses inside. We don't have many time with us today. Proverbs chapter 31, we're going to read from verse 10. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Proverbs chapter 31, starting from verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The, the earth of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Mm. She seeketh wool and flax and walketh wing willingly with her hands. Uh, hallelujah. Have you noticed something? She's not working for somebody. Hallelujah. She has understood the principle of God. And in that principle, she started doing something in order to create something. She was capable to utilize her hands and the raw material that she had and to seek for it and multiply and do something out of it. Continue, please. Give me verse 29 of her Proverbs 10. Proverbs chapter 31, verse. Proverbs chapter mm -hmm. 31, verse 29. Uh -huh. Many daughters have done virtually, virtuously, mm -hmm. but thou excels them all. Hold on a second over here. Even though the woman who shall be fear is the one that the fear read the Lord, I mean, who prays is the one that fear read the Lord. Let me tell you something. She exceeded not because she only feared the Lord. Hallelujah. She exceeded, you, you must exceed, not because you only pray God. You must exceed, not because, I say only. 
You must exceed, not because you only pray God. You must exceed as you pray God to also multiply something. This is a divine mandate. God may call you separately and ask you to do something particular. He may ask you to leave everything. You must do it. But if he did not ask you to leave everything, it means you have to do things that he wants you to do in order to bring his kingdom high and high so that you can build the kingdom of God. Let me repeat it again. If the Lord asks you, leave everything and do only him, you must obey because he is the one who gives the direction, just like he did it with Peter, with John, with James. They left all and they followed him. But if the Lord says, you are appointed, such like Solomon, and he tells you, I want you to build my temple, and I'm going to cause you to be wealthy, are you going to say, no, Lord? No. You got to do what God says by accepting the mandate that he has commanded. So until God tells you particularly that you must not do anything with the creating wealth, then you are appointed for wealth creation. Let me repeat again. Until God tells you particularly that you should not do anything with creating wealth in the sense of finances, in the sense of businesses, in the sense of creativity, so that the kingdom of God can be fulfilled or can be furnished, then you are appointed for wealth creation. So the second element is the call to be an entrepreneur. The third one is the principle of diligent labor. Now, you have understood the divine mandate. Now you are getting your hands into the plow in order to develop what God has placed in you, both in ministry and in life. Hallelujah. You are not called to be only among the brethren. The Bible says, I have sent you in the world. Hallelujah. I have sent you into the world. You got to go even as you preach, as you speak the word of God, even as you evangelize. You got to be able to pay for the bills of the sound. You cannot sit down and expect that the devil's children will come and help you. You got first to understand that God has placed in your hands the ability to Fruitful. And to be fruitful. You must believe it. Let's in the book of Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read verse 23. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever he do, do it heartily. As to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Continue. Amen. 24. Knowing that of the Lord he shall receive the rewards of the inheritance, for he served the Lord Christ. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So whatsoever ye do, do it as unto the Lord, knowing that from the Lord you shall receive the inheritance. You shall receive a reward. <laughs> Somebody help me with this one. You see, God understand and he established and he developed and he created and he put in place the mechanism of inheritance and reward. If your hands are struggling, if your hands are struggling to develop something, if your hands are struggling to develop whatever God has put in your hands, I can tell you it's not something with your hands. It's something with your mind. Because your hands don't see what they do. Hallelujah. You have the impression that all I have to do is to put my hands on it and then it just go, no. If your mind 
is properly aligned and tuned, then your mind will transfer the knowledge to your hands, and your hands will now operate into the things, and the things will take the form that the Lord has placed in your mind. Are you what I'm saying? Let me give you that example. When Moses was told to build the Ark of the Covenant, he did not just put the hands on it. The Bible says this. The Bible says that he was supposed to call in people who had the skill into building certain things. Skills into uh, 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 working with uh, metal, with the uh, high on. Skills into working with gold. They had to have something in here so that they can transfer that knowledge into their hands so that their hands can build the will of God. Hallelujah. So tell to somebody, my mind must be renewed and skilled by the Spirit of God for the glory of God. There are certain, certain kind of like a shadow that can remain in your mind and prevent you to see how God is opening. And you will look and you will not perceive that's why you ought to now agree in your heart that what God says concerns you. It does not concern your neighbor. It concerns you. When God says, I deposited into you dominion in your life, dominion, I have called and appointed you to become wealth manufacturer. It is a will of God that is perfect that you are fulfilling for the advancement of the kingdom of God. God does not want you to be wealth manufacturer so you will buy all kind of car. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. He does not want you to be wealth manufacturer so you will buy yeah, the ladies, the ladies with, with all kind of like bags. She has bag, cappuccino bags. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, he does not appoint you to be wealth manufacturer so you will go around buying a lot of uh, dole. No, no, no. Hallelujah. It's not a dundole matter. It's a kingdom matter. It is a kingdom matter. So if you believe God, if you honor God, if you love him, you will do what he says and you will do it perfectly. Take example on Solomon. He built what God put in his hands. I say he built what God put in his hands. What did the Lord put in your hands? Some of you say, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know because over here has not been renewed. The voice of God that speaketh into your life comes through your spirit and descends in your soul so that your mind can understand. Without understanding, you cannot be fruitful. The Bible said when the word of God was preached, the, the sower went out in the book of Matthew 13. He went out and he saw. And some fell in the good ground. The Bible said they received and understood. Then they were fruitful. You can receive, you, you won't understand, you won't be fruitful. Somebody say, Lord, open my understanding. Open my understanding. So that whatever you do, you can be able to do it unto the Lord. You are not doing for yourself. You are doing for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Fourth element is the power of et 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 ethical business practices. Amen. You got to have like divine inspired ways of conducting the things of God. Both for your own and for the people. You have to have, the, you know, there are two things I always tell to people I meet. I said, if you want to do business with me, if you want to associate with me, if you want to come into my perimeter, there are two things I value. It's not money. If you come to make a lot of money, please go on the left, right. <laughs> Amen. But if you come to value 
truth and honesty, which is embedded into Christ, then you will understand that everything that I am doing, I'm not doing so I will buy all kind of houses. I'm not doing so that the people will say I am somebody. No, I'm doing so that God can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Somebody say, I want to hear my father says, well done, good and faithful servant. There is a time when you believe that everything that you have to have have to come from the pastor. Pastor, I don't have money to buy this. Pastor, I don't have money to buy this. Pastor himself is struggling too. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many pastors over there recognize when you struggle and then they come to ask you, can you give me this? You yourself, you're looking in your pocket. You don't even know where that is. But you still have to figure out how to give it unto the person because the heart of the pastor is the heart of a shepherd. But your heart must be a heart that giveth. Hallelujah. Your heart. Say, say my heart must be a heart that giveth. God says he loveth a cheerful giver. But you cannot give if you have not manifested it. He gives the, the, the seed to the sower. He wants you to build and develop ideas that he planted in you in order to create wealth, to advance his kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's read Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. A false balance is abomination to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight. Hallelujah. Amen. Without truth and honesty, you cannot operate and do what God is asking you because you will be operating as just the world. You cannot please God without truth and honesty in, in, in him. So he wants you to utilize a right balance. Some of you who already are in businesses, who already are having something in their hands, you must utilize a divine balance in order to see fulfillment. fulfillment. Hallelujah. You must utilize a divine balance. Hallelujah. So the power to have ethical business mindset and practices both in your life and in the things that God has put in your hands you must develop it hallelujah because it goes into the righteousness of God to see you perfectly complete his will over you and the people he put in your hands so the fifth we're gonna go in the responsibility to Generosity, you got to be giver, as I said earlier. <laughs> Some of you, you don't understand that when the Lord Jesus says, whatever you want to do, whatever you want other people to do unto you, do it unto them. And he gave that example by saying, if you turn your eyes to the poor, the day you are in need, People will turn their eyes <laughs> from you. You got to be a giver. To develop in the mindset of God. To develop in the will of God. To support the ministry. To support your own life. To support your people. To support your family. You have first to accept that God has appointed you. To be wealth manufacturer. If you accept that God has appointed you to be manuf wealth manufacturer, please li lift up your hands. If you did not, Pastor, we pray for you so that uh, you will understand it. Hallelujah. 
Because it's not everybody who wants to be wealth manufacturer because they don't understand it. They, 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 they believe, oh, let me be poor so that the Lord will look unto me. No, that's not how it works. Hallelujah. You don't desire to be poor so God will look unto you. No, hallelujah. A poor is not somebody who does not want to do something. It's somebody, regardless what he does, is struggling. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next. So we are on the responsibility of generosity. We're going to go in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 24. There is that scattered and yet increased, and there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but extended <laughs> to poverty. And then 25. 25. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I love this one. You know, this is the word of God. Amen. And the word of God says, uh, uh, give me that in Amplified Version. The word of God says this, that when you learn the spirit of generosity, you will not pass on the generation spirit of poverty. Mm -hmm. When you learn the spirit of generosity, you will not pass on to your children the spirit of generational, the generational <laughs> poverty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give me back the word in, uh, in Amplified, please. Proverbs chapter 11. 25 mm -hmm. amplified the generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched the generous man is a source of blessing and he shall be prosperous you see what makes him prosperous is what he gives listen in the world of business in order to be able to continue you must do what we call a roy a roy is r o i it means return of on an on investment of whatever you have put in so you cannot have if you don't put in are you following you cannot reap the harvest if you have not planted some people want to sit down and they want their neighbor to plant and then we're gonna take it this is a thief say i am not a thief but as you understand the principle in which god has called you so you can increase his kingdom. If that heart that you have has not yet understood the desire to increase the kingdom of God, then you must pray for it. I can have nobody with me, but I will help everyone to have people. Are you know what I'm saying? Because you are not church-minded, you are Kingdom minded. You can help these people to grow even as you are low because you are about the kingdom of God. But the Bible says this God will not keep you low. Amen. Hallelujah. It will not keep you low. Let, let's go back to the word. Give me, give me back, please. Uh -huh. The generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters will himself be watered. Hallelujah. Amen. Who he, who, and he who waters will himself be watered. Hallelujah. Reaping what? Reaping? Reaping the generosity he has sown. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, I believe. I believe. I believe. In the word of God, I believe in the promises of God. Let me tell you something. God talks about generosity, okay? To be generous, it does not mean you must have the fiduciary in your hand. Let me explain so you understand. To be generous, you must have a heart that is first available to become a wealth manufacturer. Because remember, he gives soul to the sower. 
So you have to be sober first. Hallelujah. So you have to have a heart that has the desire, that seek it to grow the kingdom of God. That's, that's the first thing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all those things will be added unto you. So you must have a heart that seek it to grow the kingdom of God. You have to have the desire for the souls. You have to have the desire. Because remember, when the Lord comes back, he will ask you and I, what have we done? After we are saved, after we are born again, he will ask us, what have we done with what we received? So your heart first and foremost must have the desire to see souls saved. Your heart must have the desire to see the kingdom of God expanded. Why? Because if truly God is your father, you cannot see his house go down. If God is your father, you cannot accept his house to go down. Let's continue. We have few time left. Hallelujah. So um, let me wrap up quickly. The first one is uh, the divine mandate for wealth creation. I'm talking about the sev seven major shift of divine wealth. Amen. We're talking about kingdom of God and business in order to be appointed to be wealth manufacturer. So the first principle is the divine mandate for wealth creation. You must understand that. You must believe it. You must accept it. Because he is the one who says in Genesis chapter 1, 28, be fruitful, multiply, subdue. So it comes from him. It does not come from the devil. Hallelujah. Second thing, the call to be an entrepreneur. Hallelujah. The call to entrepreneurial spirit. You have to have the desire, creativity inside of you. You must have inside of you that desire to be creative. So God can utilize that desire and transform it. The third is a principle to be diligent in what you do. You must be consistent. Consistent. You must be diligent. For the word of God says, he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you cannot do it once and then another time. No. Diligently. You have to diligently appoint yourself into the task that God has placed in your hands. The, 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 the fourth is that you have to understand the power of ethical business practices. You have to have integrity. Amen. You got to have integrity. You got to have understanding of truth and honesty. You got to be, you got to, to be honest. Hallelujah. The fifth is the responsibility to generosity. You have to have a heart that desire to give. Amen. As you desire truly to give, you will receive the seed. Hallelujah. Amen. When you desire to give, God says, he gives the seed to the sower. Huh. Amen. And then the sixth is the purpose of wealth beyond accumulation. What is that purpose? The purpose of wealth beyond accumulation. Let's go in the Matthew chapter, nine, uh, chapter 6. We're going to read from verse 19. Matthew 21. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Mm. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Do, do, do you understand this word? Some people just misunderstood this whole word. So let me break it down. Hallelujah. It says, lay not for yourself. Amen. Do not accumulate so that you will look into it. Some people, they look into the bank account and they see money inside and they are joyful. And yet the church does not have light. This is awful. 
They look into the, the you know, so, so, some people, they, they just put their money under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. He put all his money under the bed and he sleep over it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, no, no. The Bible says, do not live for yourself. This is what it means. Don't live for yourself where thief comes, takes it, but do so for the kingdom, in the kingdom. All it means, when you have 1,000, Hallelujah. Don't eat all the 1,000. Because you have to take out of it in order to put into the kingdom. So it will be accounted into your heavenly bank. Does it make sense? Let me explain again. When you take all the things of the world for you, and then you have your own pleasure, you are sinning against God. But when you are taking those things from the hand of the wicked... And then you are manufacturing it in order to grow the kingdom of God. You are doing the will of God. So do not live for yourself. Amen. Put me back the word, please. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And where thieves break through and steal. But... Lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. How you do that? By investing the things that you have into the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom of God includes heaven and earth. Hallelujah. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. It does not mean become poor. It means that as you receive, you continue inject into the kingdom of God and you are accumulating for yourself a treasure in heaven. But as you do so, God continues to give you the seed so you can become and continue to be sower. Hallelujah. The last point, and we're going to wrap up. The hope of eternal reward. To have a kingdom mindset. Amen. The sixth one is that the purpose of wealth beyond accumulation is that, is that to, to be impactful, to have an impact. And the seventh is the hope of eternal reward. So let's read from verse 25 of, uh, sorry, Matthew 25, verse 21. Matthew chapter 25 verse 21 his lord said unto him his lord said unto him well done well done thou good and faithful thou good servant. and faithful servant thou has been faithful thou has been faithful over a few things over a few things i will make thee ruler. i will make thee ruler ruler he is not you will make you dreamer <laughs> hallelujah Amen. he said he will make you ruler over what? Over many, many things. things. And enter, enter thou what? Into the joy of thy Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I will make you ruler over many things. You see the Lord looks and then he says, well done. <laughs> well done. Hallelujah. Well done. Good and faithful servant. You don't want to be just a faithful servant. You don't want to be just a good servant. You want to be good and faithful. Hallelujah. In good and faithfulness, you take care of the things. The Bible said things. Hallelujah. It is the word things. Hallelujah. You know, you know, you, you, he said you take, you, you took care of the things that he put in your hand. And you look at you. And he says, good. Have you ever, have you ever worked for somebody where the person look at you and knows you are of a value for the company. And the person look at you and say, this person is a good asset for the company. That's your father. Your heavenly father must look at you and say, ah, this one. No, you, you over there. The one, the one I'm pointing to. No, no, on the, on, no, your neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. He looks at you. And he says, 
good, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. All we do on earth is not so that we go, like, we don't do work on earth to go in heaven because we are saved by grace, by, through faith. However, the good work, hallelujah, the Bible talked about to be ready unto every good work. Yeah. To do good, you must put into something that is defined as good. But when you put something good into it, you must continue. That's where you are faithful. So good and faithful servant. Into the joy of your father. Good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your father. One, you have to believe the divine mandate for wealth creation. God is calling you as a steward. Down a little bit. The second, the call to be an entrepreneur. God is calling you to be creative because he created you with his spirit. So the spirit that God has put in you by breathing, his breath that he's put in your lungs must cause you to become creative. But this can only happen when your heart has a desire to fulfill his good pleasure by becoming appointed to wealth and to be a wealth manufacturer. In the business of God, in the kingdom of of God he does not want you to be on the side he wants you to hear from him and to do what he says but for you to do so you must change the thought of your heart you must change the thought of your heart the third you must have a principle in diligence being diligent in what you do you must have a work ethic. You must have a good understanding of integrity, of honesty. The fourth is the power to be, no, no the, the fifth, I, I mean, the fourth is the power to have ethical business practices. Amen? The fifth is the responsibility to generosity. The sixth, it's the purpose of wealth beyond accumulation so you understand that you are put there to impact nations, to impact your community, to impact the church you are in, to impact the city you live in, to impact things around you. The seven is the hope of eternal reward. To know that what I'm putting in the kingdom of God is not lost. If I did not buy two Ferrari, and I only bought one Toyota, it's fine. I will put the money into the kingdom of God. And as God is looking at me, he will give me back so I can buy the other car I want. But I must learn first to buy the things and to put the, what I have into the kingdom of God with a heart that desires to serve him. With the heart that desires to please him. Please stand up. Are we asked to uh, Pastor Ben Train? If, uh, if, where's Pastor Ben Train? Hallelujah. I, I want you please to go. You see the lady over there in the yellow jacket on the front. Yes. Yes, go there, please. Hear me very carefully. 
what God has designed for your life was not something that the enemy or is not something that the enemy will thwart. Let me let me say it again. What God has designed in your life is not something that the enemy can thwart. For what the enemy believes that he is thwarting is only the directing you is only causing you to fulfill it. Let me say it again. What God has designed in your life, there is no witches, there is no marabou, there is no wizard, there is no power of darkness that will thwart it. For every single thing that they will do, we cause you into the direction to fulfill your divine mandate. You must know it. The dreams that God has placed in the life of Joseph, it was not to make him only a dreamer. It was to cause him to become a ruler. And the enemy has entered the life of his own people to push him away from the house. But he has entered into the palace. Whenever they pushed you away, they were pushing you towards the palace that God has said you must enter in. I pray over your head. Pastor, put your hands over her, please. Please. Today, I decree over your life that the cup of anointing of God is being pulled out over you right now. And I break every jackals that the enemy has ever held you with. I destroy it to the root in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause the coat that the Lord has placed over you to be multiple color. That every creativity that the Lord God has designed for you, your name is written on it. And you are advancing. And I decree by the word of God, thou shalt advance, thou shalt continue and thou shalt advance in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the anointing that shifts and changes things. Lo and below, the word of God is true. For he says, I am not a man to repent. I am not a man to lie, neither the son of man to repent. For what I say, I watch over my word to fulfill it. For this is my good pleasure in which I have called you, in which I have appointed you, in which I have spoken over you. I cause you now. I cause you now. I cause you now. I cause you now I go who receive the word who receive the power of God Shatara Brasida I cause your bones to shut up in the fire of God. I cause the bones. Kase brase kataha. I cause everything in you right now. The fire of God is shut up in your bones, and that will not depart, and that will not go out. For you are a worshiper, you shall remain in fire for God, and thou is caused today to be appointed a wealth manufacturer. Labanteroskibiridabadi, I bless the name of God. For all he does, I thank him. Where is the wife of the pastor, please? Bring me the wife of the pastor. Where is Pastor Jenny? Pastor Jenny, please. Listen to me carefully. The word of God says, Oh, Father, thank you. He says, I have called you to be a help. Listen carefully what I'm saying. I have called you to be a help. What it means for you 
is that God says he will place in your hands the finances to promote the kingdom of God. Listen very listen to me very carefully. It's Akofros Tebebrende Sokatea. He says, I have called you to be a helper. So Froseketia. He puts and places in your hands the increase. Oh, so froseketi arabadabada. He puts in your hands the increase. Rose, Pastor, please touch your hands for me. Touch your hands for me. Put your hands on the hands. I call the increase, the financial increase. I call the financial success to be placed in your hands. To be placed in your hands. I hear the Lord says, Thou hast prayed too long. I am now manifesting it. I hear the Lord says, Thou hast called too long. I am now fulfilling it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I let the Spirit of God now over. Let everybody put your hands up. All of you, put your hands up. Put your hands up. Hallelujah. Put your hands up. And you want to understand there is a rain that falls. And when that when that rain falls, that rain brings into your life the wetness that is required for the seed in your life to grow. So every seed that was in your life, you right now, I'm speaking to you. The seed that was in your life, I cast a batabada. The man that is over there, right there, right there. Oh, so sad. I'm speaking over you right now that the seed that God has already planted in you that the rain of heaven that the dew of heaven that is it that the dew of heaven that is it right now that the dew of heaven that is it right now I speak it right now in your life that the dew of heaven that the rain of heaven grow germinate in your life right now and you are fruitful I command your spirit to become wealth entrepreneur, wealth manufacturer, and I chase out the spirit of poverty, and I cause it to live your life. I cause it to live your family. I cause it to live your For you shall prosper. You shall advance. You shall remit unto your children, children, the inheritance of the Lord. And God says unto you, well done. Good. And faithful servant in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.